So you just want to know how to rig and animate hair. Not a problem. Now, you can use Blender's in-house cloth physics for this, but it's much easier to export your animation to game engines like Unity and Unreal if you use the traditional bone rigging system. So to do that, go to edit mode and shift E to duplicate any lone bone to the root of a hair strand that you want to control, and press E to extrude it into a chain for the hair. Do this for all the major hair strands, make sure that the parent to the head, and weight paint the same way that you would for anything else. Now, if your hair is all one object and you're having trouble weight painting, then try separating the strands into separate objects. You can do this by clicking the hair in object mode, go to edit mode, put your mouse over a strand, press L, right click, separate by selection, and weight paint them one at a time. And then when you're done, you can combine them back into a single object by shift clicking all the hair in object mode, right click, join, and then all the hair will be weight painted properly and will be a single object. Now, generally, you don't want to animate the hair by hand. You could use the spring add-on that we use for the boobs to control the hair, but there's a faster and easier option that I want you to try first. Go to the link in the description and download this add-on. Then go to Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, find the download location, install add-on, back in preferences, locate the add-on, check the box, save preferences, go to pose mode, then select all the hair bones, and in the bone tab, scroll down and check the box that says wiggle bone, and make sure that it says active. You're done. From here on, the hair is animated automatically. All you gotta do is mess with the numbers. So here's what the numbers do. Stiffness goes from zero to one and affects how frequently the bones bounce. The closer to zero, the fewer bounces you get and the slower they'll be. The closer to one, the more bounces you get and the bounces will be smaller. Dampening goes from zero to one and controls how quickly the bounces become weaker. Zero means bouncing takes forever to stop and the closer to one, the faster the bounces get weaker each jiggle. Amplitude rotation is how far the bones fling out. Zero means no movement at all. The higher the value, the farther the bones will fling out during each jiggle. Amplitude translation is how far the non-parented bones will physically move during each jiggle. And it only affects the bones that are disconnected from their parent. So these bones won't be affected by this, but these bones will. Zero means the root bone will never move from position. But the higher the value means the bones will dislocate themselves in the direction of the bounce's momentum. Stretch just causes the bones to stretch a little each time they bounce. Zero equals no stretching at all. And one makes the bones stretch out like crazy each bounce. Gravity is just how heavily you want the bones to sag. Zero equals no sag at all, and the higher the value, the more the bones will default to sinking down. Also, if you make gravity negative, the bones will start to float up instead, which could actually be really useful for things like powering up for a Kamehameha. Now, the next big question you're probably wondering is, why use this add-on instead of the one that we used for jigs? And the main reason is because the wiggle add-on allows you to activate and edit values for all the selected bones at the same time. The other one only lets you edit values one bone at a time. And if you're working with hair, then changing the values one at a time would actually take forever. The other big reason is because the wiggle add-on doesn't function like a constraint. See how when we activate the spring add-on, these bones turn green? That means they're constrained, which generally means that you can't manually move them anymore. But you'll notice that when we activate the wiggle add-on, the bones don't turn green, which means that in the middle of your animation, if you want the hair to be in a certain position, you can always manually move them and keyframe them wherever you want. This is really helpful if you want the hair to be in a specific position at a specific frame. Now, personally, I think the spring bones physics looks a lot more realistic. Right now, this animation is using the spring add-on. And the one thing that you might notice is that when she jumps up for the attack, her boobs get dragged this way. And when the attack ends, you can see that her momentum causes them to fling up, which is what you would expect. But for some reason, if we try to use the wiggle add-on instead for the same animation, the movement and momentum for the jiggle doesn't even seem to register the way it did for the spring. I don't know the specifics, but basically, the motions for the spring add-on just look a lot more realistic than the motions for the wiggle. But wiggle is a lot easier to use, so just use the one that works best for your situation. The last thing that a lot of you asked about in the comments was exporting to game engines. Now, because we are using bones and weight painting, if you export a baked FBX file, it should export to Unity and look exactly the same way it looked in Blender. But if you want the hair to be affected by the game engine physics, or respond to things like the wind or react to different directions the player chooses to go, you'll You'll have to control that in Unity. There's a really good plugin that people on VR chat like to use called Dynamic Bones. Once you've exported your character from Blender to Unity, you can use that plugin to control when you want the hair to follow Blender animations or when you want the hair to respond to real-time game environments. Well, I'll get to that later. But for now, hope that helps. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.